today's labs, we're going to be looking at exploring motion. Basically, we're going to see how Newton's laws affect different rates of speed and acceleration and inertia uh, based through about seven different labs today. So, in the beginning of the video, we're going to start off looking at each one of those seven labs, and then we'll look at some of the students participating in those labs. And finally, at the conclusion of the video, we'll kind of see how these forces relate to each other and kind of what was anticipated and what actually happened in the labs as we went through them. Okay, so watch this video to conclusion. You'll see some of the students working through the labs as we go through this video as well. Okay, I hope you enjoy it. Okay, in this first lab, we've taken a small book and we have actually attached a string through the spine of the book and we've attached a spring scale here at the end of the string. And so the idea of this lab is to actually pull the spring scale until the book starts sliding and get a measurement of how many newtons of force that would take to pull one book. And then for the remainder part of the lab, it asks to stack one book on top and then pull again and see what happens. And then finally take a third book and stack on top and see what happens. In this lab, we have two different eggs, one that is a raw egg one that is hard-boiled. Number one, that's indicated here by Sharpie, is actually a hard-boiled egg, and number two is a raw egg. And the idea is to weigh both eggs and get a mass for each of the eggs, so we do that by putting on the triple beam balance and putting the egg inside of a cup. Now remember, the cup has mass also, so you have to subtract the cup's mass from the mass of the egg combined with the cup to actually get the mass of the egg. Once we've done that, then we're going to determine by the mass of the egg if you can determine which one might be hard-boiled, which one is raw. Okay, upon weighing the eggs and determining which one might be the hard-boiled, the next task is to actually spin the eggs and see if you can tell by the way they spin which egg is which. So that was number one, this is number two. Okay, so there is a difference in how they spin. So then the next task is to actually spin the egg and then put your finger on it and then let up and see what happens. Okay, in this particular station, you're supposed to take a coin, stick it on top of an index card, and try to get the coin to fall into the beaker without touching the coin. In this lab, we have a ring stand attached, um, a string is attached to it. Then we have a 500 gram mass attached to that. We also have this thread attached a third of the way up the string. And the first thing we're to do is actually pull the string gently and then describe the motion of the mass. Then next, we take a quick jerk on the string and describe the motion of that mass. Okay, in this lab, we have two sheets of paper, eight and a half by eleven, and you're to get the mass of each paper by putting it on a triple beam balance. And we also have the crumpled piece, okay? 
And the idea is to come up with an idea about if you drop them from the same height at the same time, which one will hit the ground first, and then they experiment and explore with that. Okay, in this lab, this one's pretty unique. You're supposed to stand about 30 centimeters away from the wall. Well, 30 centimeters is about the length of a ruler. So you stand about that far. And then it says to uh, time yourself for 60 seconds, pushing all your force that you can on your wrist up against the wall like this. And then do this for 60 seconds and step away and see what happens. Then finally, our last lab is to take a uh, number of nickels, uh, 10 being the minimum stack that you can have, and to stack them up and to actually see how you might go about removing the bottom nickels with a ruler. So as we stack them up on top of each other, taking the ruler and quickly swiping at the bottom one to get the bottom one to go away without knocking over the stack like I just did. We'll see how the students do. Looking back at the video, if you were to go back and look at the first station, which was the spring scale pulling the different books, what you would notice is by increasing each book on top of the original book, it adds more pressure or mass on top. And so what that's going to do is create more friction between the tabletop and the books. So you're going to increase more uh, inertia. So it wants to stay still even more than it did before. So it's going to take a lot more force or pressure to get uh, that... Um, those books to start sliding across that table. So as you increase the mass of the books, it was going to create more uh, friction between the desk and the books. Therefore, the spring scale was going to register more forces and newtons to get them to start moving. In the second lab, the egg, if you notice, was spinning really fast. That was hard boiled. Now that's because the hard boiled egg is solidified inside. Everything's real solid. So when you spin it, it's creating a lot of momentum inside. Now, the other egg, the raw egg, when you spun it, if you notice, it spun a lot more slowly. And that's because it's a fluid inside. And so the fluid is shifting from side to side inside that egg, causing it to not want to get as much momentum spinning. And so if you try to stop them, of course, the one that has more momentum, which is going to be the, the hard-boiled egg, it's going to take more time to get that to stop and slow down. Because, yet again, it has more inertia. Once it gets moving, it wants to continue moving. Not that the masses were necessarily different, the masses were the same, but what we were dealing with was a liquid fluid inside the egg versus a solid substance inside the egg where it was cooked. The third lab was actually uh, flicking the index card and watching the coin fall inside. Again, another example of inertia. The coin wants to stay at rest. Because there is very little friction between the smooth card and the coin, when you flip the card, uh, the coin automatically wants to fall because there's not enough friction between the card and the coin to carry the coin off with the card. Now, if you were to take the card and move it real slowly, then of course there's enough friction there to hold the coin in place and the coin would not have fallen into the beaker. Uh, the next lab after that was the one with the masses. As you notice, when you pull the string slowly with the mass, it's got a nice smooth motion as the mass follows the, the, the direction of the force as you pull it. And so it's just kind of hanging down and wanting to come real slowly. But the second you yank it real quickly, you disturb its inertia. It doesn't want to move that quickly. It's okay to go slowly. It's kind of like moving a big heavy refrigerator. 
it's going to take a little bit of work to get it to move. You can't just get up behind it and just cram into a refrigerator. It's going to knock it over. It's not going to move near, move near as slowly and as steadily as it would if you did it nice and slow. So that's kind of what that lab was all about. The next lab was basically dropping the two pieces of paper, one that was flat, one that was crumpled up. If you drop them at the same point and they're both crumpled up, they're going to hit the ground at the very same time. But because one of them was flat, it has more air resistance underneath it. So as it comes down, the air is kind of preventing it from falling, kind of like a parachute. The other one, the air flows real evenly around that ball of wadded up paper, and so it falls immediately. Now the one that seemed to give most uh, students the biggest and hardest time of figuring out how is this possible is when their arm was up against the wall pushing against it. Well, that is an equal and opposite situation. What's going on is you have all these muscles, your biceps and your triceps, that work together to help you move and coordinate your arm. Well, you've got your muscle for six, 60 solid seconds constantly pushing against that wall. Well, the wall is much stronger than your arm's ever going to be. And so when you step away, your, your arm just, there's a memory kind of built up in your mind and in your muscle that your arm wants to continue to pull. Now that you've moved away that force that's pushing against your arm, then it's free to move up. And so that's kind of what that is. It's just a reflex of your muscles. Then finally, your final lab was the stack of coins that you were hitting with the bottom of the ruler. And that ruler, if you notice, there was lots of students that were trying to do it real slow. Well, the problem is that slow movement of that ruler is not overcoming the friction between the desk and the, and the coins. And so the whole stack wants to fall over when you do it. But if you do it real quickly, you basically take away that friction. You overcome it really fast. Because remember, Newton's first law says an object at rest will stay at rest and an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by an unbalanced force. That unbalanced force coming quickly overcomes its inertia very fast. And so the stack stays still. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to post me a comment, shoot me an email, or see me in class, and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Thanks for watching. In that task, you're to spin the egg. So you would take an egg out. Actually, you then the second thing is to quickly jerk the mass with the t with the string and see how that differs. So that's kind of the difference.